What's going on fine people of YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the auto closure keyword in Swift, not very commonly talked about, so figure we'd talk about it today. Now before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe, you guys know the drill, really helps me and the channel out to continue making videos. That said, let's jump right in. So auto closures are a way to make a perf optimization. It's not commonly done by most folks, so we're gonna see the actual optimization we're gonna wanna make, and then we'll talk about actually using said keyword. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a struct and we're gonna attempt to spell things correctly. So we're gonna create a struct called company and we're just gonna create this for example's sake. We'll have a single property in here. We're also going to make this object custom string convertible and we'll have the description computed property. And what we're gonna basically just return is company, let's see, company is, we'll just interpolate the name inside of here, just like that. Now we actually want to create said company, so we'll create Apple here. We'll go ahead and pass in a name, of course, Apple, and we also want to declare two more things up here. Now, in our example here, what we're going to say is if we are in a debug mode, aka, you know, we're building, we're testing things, we're going to want to add some debug logging functionality. So let's say we have a function called uh, debug log and this is going to more or less take in a single argument of message and what we're going to go in here and do is say if we're in debug mode checking our boolean that we've just hard coded for our, our example we can simply print out debug followed by the message we have passed in. Now, why did we create this function? Well, let's say in this case, we wanna test this company object. Let's say something's going wrong. We're gonna go ahead and say, go ahead and uh, print out, or we can actually go ahead and just do uh, call this function rather, since we're already printing out in there. And we can say apple.description. Now, the other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is just print out some line breaks, since sometimes my console shows uh, some other funky stuff. So we'll go ahead and run this playground and let's see what we actually get. So we're gonna go ahead and run it, and there we have our actual print. So we say debug company's Apple. So that makes sense, pretty simple. Now, what is, what is wrong with this code? So it's not per se wrong, but it's definitely not ideal. And that is, is if you go ahead and uh, take a look at the way we've written this code out, regardless of if we're in debug or not, if I go ahead and make this false, and if I print, let's say this message outside of here, we are still forcing our actual uh, argument here to pass in the computed description off of the object, in this case, Apple. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and we'll be able to better see the issue here. So we see here that company is Apple, we're still passing it in and that's not really ideal. And it's not ideal because if we're not in debug mode, why even bother hogging up memory and passing in this argument? And that's where we introduce uh, closures. And notice I said closures so far, not auto closures. So how do we fix this with a closure? Well, the cool thing you can do is instead of making this pass, it, pass in a string, what we're going to make it do is pass in a closure. And now this is going to uh, take in no arguments in this uh, closure signature and return a string. And the benefit of this is we can just say invoke message here and we'll see this error go away. And now down here, it's going to yell at us. And the reason it's going to yell at us is because this itself should be a closure. So two things have occurred here. One, we're only going to invoke this closure to return our string, our description in this case, if we're in debug. So we're only gonna pass in a reference of basically a function, a closure that can be executed. So let's go ahead and give this a run and we expect to see the exact same output that we saw the first time, but we've made a slight perf optimization in that we don't actually pass in the value at this point. So now let's see what's going on. I forgot to make debug true. Let's try that one more time. So we're gonna hit play one more time and we should see the same debug description. Now, where does auto closure come in? Now, the not nice thing about this is from the calling side of this function, we have to know that it's a closure. And you might have actually not even known a lot of places in the Swift standard library use auto closures, but you don't even understand or know about it from the caller side. And that's intentional. And the reason you can do that is if you actually annotate this auto closure, uh, singular, what you can get away with doing here on the caller side is you can call it 
uh, this function and pass in this argument as if it's a standard argument and that it's not even a closure. And the beauty of this is if you go ahead and give this a run, we've not only now optimized the fact that we're only going to invoke the closure, the auto closure here in this debug case, but from the caller side, we're not actually even letting the author know that, hey, this thing that you're passing in is actually a closure. It's not a trailing closure. It's not anything for all for all purposes. What you can see and care about is it's just passing on a standard argument. So that is basically auto closure in a nutshell. It really has two aspects to it. One, a slight perf optimization where you don't want to pass in a value directly. We only want to call this computed property off of, in this case, the company uh, struct if and only if we're in debug mode. The way we achieve that is by leveraging a closure. Now, the way we make it nicer is by leveraging auto closure. And what this allows us to do is on the caller side is not even know that we're dealing with the closure, quote unquote, under the hood, assuming this object is you know, within some other class and you know, hidden from the author who's writing this code. So that is auto closure in a nutshell. I don't wanna beat the dead horse. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Once you start using this in a lot more places, it actually becomes a little bit of a force of habit. So let me know in the comments down below if you've used auto closures before, what you think of them. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. I'm always open to uh, suggestions for videos, so feel free to connect on LinkedIn, DM on Twitter, follow all the socials. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.